Hello everyone and welcome to the English Teacher's Guide in regards to how to revise for your exams in order to achieve perfect marks. Now the aim of this video is to give you lots of different types of techniques you could employ to ensure that you're achieving perfect marks for any of your exams for anything in the future. So first of all, one thing you can do is flashcards. Now flashcards, normally A5 bits of paper or smaller, as you can see in my example here, they're different colours, you might have different colours for different subjects. One side would be the task or something you want to revise from. You then either write down your answers or you can speak or rate your answers to the person working with you or on your own. And then when you're ready, you turn the cards over to make sure you've got all the answers down. Things you could include in your flashcards. Now obviously these things are going to be more English based because obviously I'm being a bit biased and I want them to be more English based. So one side of your cards could be character information. So your questions could ask you to describe one of the character George and my cement for instance. You then got possibly on the back of your card key quotations but remember if you're going to get perfect marks you need to make sure you've got analysis of those key quotations as well. And you're basically saying out essay plans perhaps. It might be themes, so it might be explore how conflict is presented in Of Mice and Men. Sorry to keep using that example. Other flashcard examples you might use are exam methods. So how do you answer this question? How do you do that? And then finally, it might be exam questions themselves. So you might actually have to talk through an exam question. All of these can work for any of your subjects. Here's an example of an English one. So there's a question that you might use for a literature paper, for instance. This is a specific exam board. But I would then perhaps orate, say my response to someone listening or on my own. I'd write down exactly what I need to do. And then I'd turn the card over when I was ready to reveal my answers. Now you might copy and paste and print these all off onto the back of the flashcards. Or by creating the flashcards, you're actually revising anyway. So creating them is one form of revision, using them is another form of revision. You might have different examples from the past of actual essay answers that you've used. But why not put those in there as well? Another method is note taking. So obviously you've got your main information that you might get through textbooks, through your lessons, through lectures, through videos like mine online for instance. And then what you can do is just note down the key information. And this doesn't have to be written in perfect English because they're your notes. So for instance, you might write down the letter R instead of A-R-E. No might be N-O, whatever you want. Images, pictures, whatever helps you to remember. And again, reading through these texts is one form of revision creating notes in another form of revision. You might then use these notes to cover them up and then try and remember what you've noted down. My tip to you is though, rather than doing it from page one to page whatever in order all the time, try and mix the order up because sometimes you want to make sure you can access that information in your brain nice and quickly rather than going through start to finish to get to something you know was in a later stage of your notes. Also, this is one of my favorite forms of revision, is to actually record your notes. So you've read the text, you've made your notes, you've smartened your notes up, so you've revised three times already. Obviously you then read through your notes and test yourself as you would do normally, so that's the fourth kind. But what about an easier form of revision? So if you record your notes now, say onto your laptop or onto your mobile phones or tablets, for instance, whenever you're then playing the computer, or you're traveling from one place to another, or even just before you're going to bed, if you listen to your notes, you're revising. So I think, for me, this is my favorite form of revision, because I've revised four times by the time I have this, and it feels like easy revision. Okay, you're listening to your own voice over and over again. But again, work with friends. They could do different units, different topics, different subjects. And if you've all got the same notes, it helps to break it down, and it helps make that revision feel easier. So whilst you are relaxing, I don't know if you're like me, and sometimes you feel like, when you're not revising for exams, you feel like you're failing somehow. If you listen to your notes, well then you are revising, aren't you? Mind maps. Now, I know we're all familiar with mind maps. I know roughly how they work. So here, obviously, and feel free to pause, this is how to produce a mind map. You might do this, let's say, for themes, for topics. You might do this for exam questions. You might use mind maps when you're planning. That's entirely up to you. But this is one method people like to use because it's more of a stream of consciousness. It's where ideas flow from one to the other. Obviously, number one, especially for English, and again, I'm going to be biased because that's my main aim, practice makes perfect. But what I want to talk to you about now is it's not a good idea to always sit down and think, right, for the next two hours or hour and 45, I'm going to write this whole exam paper. That's not what you want to be doing. That's not smart revision. 
going to break the revision down. So what you might do is you might say, okay, in an exam, I'd have roughly 10, 15 minutes to plan this answer. Just do that. Just practice planning. Because then what you can do is, once you've finished, you might then spend the next 15 minutes or so improving that plan, making sure that plan would help you achieve perfect marks. And then if you type that up, make it nice and smart, you've now got your notes, you've now got an essay that you can revise for that could potentially be a topic in the exam. You might then decide, right, I'm gonna write an answer in this time. So 20 minutes, half hour, 45 minutes. You get the idea, then you're breaking out. It doesn't seem so monumental for you. But the better you are, the more you practice, the quicker you'll be to write those responses in perfect times. Because if you don't practice, you won't get perfect marks. Talking about timing and organisation, I've just mentioned it a moment ago. But it's impossible to spend a full day at school, full day at work or whatever, and then sit there and think, I'm going to revise all night. It's also difficult to try and make sure you're focusing on certain subjects all the time. So how about a revision timetable, for instance? So you can use one such as this. You can see different subjects on it. And I'd recommend you know, half, hour, half an hour, an hour revision chunks. You, know, you don't sit in school and revise one subject all day without a break for three, four hours. So why would you do that at home? Why would you make it seem so stressful for yourself? Give yourself regular breaks as well. Obviously, nearer the time, you want to be sitting down trying to respond to a whole section of an exam paper. That's smart because obviously you have to also practice getting used to answering that whole paper because your hands hurt, your wrist hurts right for that length of time. But you have to train yourself up to do it. Here are some other revision methods that you also may want to use. So work with friends. It's always easier to test each other, work together. What's one of your friend's weaknesses could be one of your strengths. And actually I feel that by explaining things to your friends is actually making the topic clear in your own mind. Revising to music, yes, that's more relaxing, but actually as a tip, and this is a, a form of memory, memory, if you were to revise to certain albums or songs for certain subjects, in the exam, when you start to think again about that song, it makes it easier to recall that information. When it comes to songs, you might also want to create your own revision song or you know silly ideas because it, it's easy to remember things if there's something unique about that memory. So do create your own raps or songs or whatever. You might feel a bit silly doing it, but at least it's another way to revise. Acronyms. So for instance, PEE stands for Point Evidence Explanation. So it's a way of breaking down that information. You might create your own acronyms. There are plenty of acronyms around. Also, outside of revision, you need to think about rest. You need to make sure that you are not too tired for your exams. You need to make sure that you haven't worn yourself out. You know, no professional sports player trains extensively just before their big game. So why would you do that for your big test? So make sure you're getting plenty of rest. Also with that, make sure you eat well, stay hydrated. If you drink plenty of water, your brain needs water. If you don't have it, you get headaches, you get tired, you're not gonna to perform to your best. And then finally, if you fail to prepare, well you better prepare to fail. So practice does make perfect. Employ these methods in your revision, as well as obviously looking at my videos to make sure you're doing exactly what you need for certain exams. And good luck, and I hope this has been really helpful. So thank you.